I'm Ian Freeman. I'm running as a Democrat for governor of New Hampshire. And I am running for a few different reasons. One, I think it's time for New Hampshire to peacefully secede from the United States. Just look at your choices this November on the national level. I mean, they've always been bad, but this year they're worse than ever. You've got Donald Trump, you've got Hillary Clinton, and if you think it's going to keep getting better over time, uh, you're fooling yourself. So the federal government is a horrible institution that destroys innocent, peaceful lives, not just here in the United States, but also around the globe. And we really shouldn't be uh, part of that as the state of New Hampshire. Not only that, uh, just from the moral aspect, but not only that, they take an unending amount of money from people like you. Uh, they take money from your business. They take your obedience as well through regulations that never end. They just keep coming with new regulations that do what? Who knows? They seem to empower the political class, empower a certain group of society at the cost of everyone else. So I think it's time to leave the federal government and like I said, do it on a peaceful basis. And that's one of the reasons why I'm a member of the New Hampshire Liberty Party. You might be asking yourself, why is someone who's a member of the New Hampshire Liberty Party, a very pro-freedom uh, political organization here in New Hampshire, why, uh, why am I running as a Democrat? Well, that's because the ballot access rules here in New Hampshire are absolutely horrible towards third parties. New Hampshire Liberty Party, Libertarian Party, Green Party, these are three of the third parties that exist to some extent here in New Hampshire, but they can't really thrive because it's super difficult to get on the ballot. Now, the Republicans and Democrats have made it very easy for themselves to get on the ballot. So rather than go and collect thousands upon thousands of petition signatures, uh, it only costs $100 to run as a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, for state rep, it's $2 as a Democrat or Republican, while, again, third parties must go out, hit the streets, and, and do a lot of petitioning, which takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of time. It's really unfair. And I think that ballot access should be fair for all third parties. So some people are upset. They say, well, you shouldn't be running as a Democrat. And I say, well, change the laws, change the rules about ballot access, and then there would be no reason uh, for me to run within the, uh, the Democratic Party. So that's another one of my main campaign issues is ballot access fairness. And if you want to learn more about the New Hampshire Liberty Party, by the way, I would recommend you visit nhliberty.info. Further, uh, the war on drugs and all other uh, nonviolent, consensual crimes, if you will, victimless crimes, uh, these things need to end. Prohibitions on drugs, prostitution, gambling, things that people can consent with one another uh, to do. And really, it's no one else's business what you do with your own body or your own money. And the idea that the state continues to lock up our friends and our family members and our co-workers and our neighbors, these are the victims of the war on drugs. They may have a drug problem. There's, of course, the heroin epidemic here in New Hampshire. And the solution to heroin isn't to crack down, isn't to arrest more people, isn't to put more people in a jail cell. And it's also not to force people into treatment, which is what you'll hear from some, likely some of the candidates. Um, you know, forced treatment may be slightly better than forcing someone into a jail cell, but if you take someone who is not really ready to be treated, not really wanting that for themselves at that point in their life, and force them into it, what you do is you actually ruin the experience of treatment for the other people who are in that program. Because those are people who went into it voluntarily. They decided, all right, I'm at the bottom of the barrel, I've got to do something about this, I'm ready to go get treated. Then they show up with these court-ordered uh, treatment people into some group therapy and now they've, they're in the same room with people who really don't want to be there and who may still be actually pushing heroin uh, on the side. So there's some real problems with uh, the war on drugs. It's victimizing our peaceful neighbors and it needs to end. And then the police can actually focus on real crimes. Like I would rather have the police going after rapists, murderers, arsonists, people who destroy property. So uh, thank you for listening to me here uh, and I appreciate your time. You can always go to nhliberty.info to learn more about me and the New Hampshire Liberty Party. Thanks. Hello, my name is Derek Dextres, and I'm running for governor of the state of New Hampshire in the Democratic primary. I also created the pumpkin, the anti-bullying children's book, The Pumpkin Wizard. I believe that our state needs a governor that represents the class 
the working class, and knows their struggles. Their struggles to make ends meet with a minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. In fact, I know a woman that makes $10 an hour. She lives on her own and pays $750 rent, which is relatively cheap in the state of New Hampshire. But she still doesn't have enough money left over each month for the necessaries of life. The state tells her she makes too much money for food stamps and any other type of welfare. In 2011, the Republicans voted to have a no minimum wage in New Hampshire and go by the federal minimum wage, which is $7.25 an hour. That's $290 per week or $15,080 gross income per year. How can anybody live off of that? That's why I'm in the fight for 15 an hour so that the working class can have what they need to survive. I will also fight for legalizing marijuana and decriminalize possession of marijuana. There are many benefits to doing this. The New Hampshire police force would have more time to focus on crimes that matter to the people of New Hampshire. It would free up jails that are overcrowded and it would bring, the new, it would bring in new revenue that could be used to benefit the state. Colorado saw $135 million in new revenue last year with this new tax revenue, New Hampshire can invest in more beds and rehabilitation centers for opiate addicts. I probably don't have to tell you that opiate use is an epidemic in our state. New Hampshire is on course to have just shy of 500 deaths by the end of this year from opiate overdose. In fact, many of you probably know someone who is suffering. I know someone and that someone is my brother. He has overdosed five times in the last two years. He is clean now and doing good. I know it's a fight for him every day to stay clean. We need to start helping addicts to kick their habit and renew their lives. Homeless veterans also need a second chance at life. After serving our country, the money from legalizing marijuana could be used to support organizations like the Veteran Resort Chapel in Lee. New, New Hampshire that <laughs> and Lee, New Hampshire, that helps homeless veterans get back on their feet by providing homes and community support for them. Go to veteransresortchapel.com if you want to help them. These are some of the struggles that I know about, but I want you to I want to know about your struggles too. So and I invite you to email me at governordextrays at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at Derek Dextrays and let me know what you think. You can learn more about my other views by going to my website, DerekDextrays.com. When I am governor of the state of New Hampshire, I will have an open door policy that one day a month will allow anybody in the state to come to my office and talk to me without an appointment. Just show up and we can talk. I think we should work together, and on September 10th, if you're around Dover, New Hampshire, please come to uh, Henry Law Park in Dover, New Hampshire, and we're having a big bash from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, hope to see you there, and I hope for your vote. I'm Chuck Weed, and I'm running for District 2, representing Keene for the County Commission. Let me uh, explain a little bit about myself to those of people who don't know me. Uh, I've been in and around Keene for about 44 years, uh, raised five kids here, and they all went through the public school system. Uh, I'm married to a wonderful woman by the name of April, and we've been married for 38 years, uh, and uh, um, have 11 grandkids uh, scattered around the country. A couple of them are close, one in Vermont and one in uh, northern New Hampshire where they teach school or run travel services. Uh, I was a political science professor at Keene State College for 40 years, I retired in 2012, uh, ran for the House of Representatives, New, New Hampshire House of Representatives in 2000 and served for 14 years. I was on the Transportation Committee, the Election Committee, uh, and uh, certainly enjoyed my service up there, but I'm enjoying much more uh, being a county commissioner here in Keene, largely because I think the people really care about what they're doing. There's very little ideological conflict. Most of us, most of what we do is problem solving. Uh, so it's a really great place to uh, serve the public. Um, I should say uh, a little bit about 
some of my interests um, as well. Uh, I have, um, um, well, and I'll talk about the issues, uh, the issues that I've uh, seen in the last couple of years and some of those which I hope to get to in the next few years. Um, I, I've been, I have oversight and monitoring responsibilities for both the jail, uh, the Department of Corrections, and Maplewood Nursing Home, as well as uh, the county employees, including collective bargaining. Um, in the first two years of my service, uh, the major issues were the uh, pipeline, uh, which was going to go through about six towns uh, in Cheshire County. And one of my goals prior to being elected and um, found it worked very well uh, in that particular operation was to increase the communication between affected communica communities uh, within the county. Of course, you're probably aware uh, the pipeline uh, proposal was abandoned. Uh, I was opposed to it from the beginning, but I took uh, the role of increasing communication rather than uh, being an advocate uh, as, as a county commissioner. Uh, in addition to that, um, we're, we're still working. Uh, it's been a long process on trying to decide whether to refurbish Maplewood Nursing Home or, or to move it. Uh, I'm in favor of moving it. Um, uh, it's been an important issue. There have been public hearings uh, throughout the county. Uh, I believe that we're within a month and a half, maybe, of a decision uh, by the delegation about uh, their preferences. And of course, once they make a preference, it'll be up to the commissioners to decide whether or not um, it will serve the interests of the elders in this community, both in terms of safety, uh, in terms of comfort, and in terms of quality of life. Uh, which is really important to us. Uh, but that's still a, a very big issue uh, and it's a relatively costly issue. As uh, most of you are probably aware, 60% uh, of the revenues for government service in the state of New Hampshire uh, come from uh, property taxes. And what I've noticed as commissioner is that the state is very, very inclined to cost shift downward to local taxpayers. I'm, very upset with that. Uh, as a legislator, I tried to get a fair tax structure and tried to avoid or tried to prevent that kind of cost shifting, but it still goes on in a big way. Uh, and we've got to do something about it. Uh, I would hope the taxpayers begin to speak out about the unfair taxation and the uh, uh, unprogressive uh, tax structure. Let me say that I, you know, what we need to do uh, in, in Keene and I hope to do in the next couple of years is to uh, get very much involved in transportation. Um, that's a huge problem, I think, in terms of people getting to doctors and getting to work. Uh, it's something that can join the committee. So I, I'm very much involved with that. I've been involved very much with the uh, Monadnock Regional Transportation Commission, which has uh, done a lot of with alternative uh, transportation. And, and I've been sending information about grants uh, to our grants officers and other people about that. Uh, I hope to work with Monadnock by local to get a local currency. I think that would help with economic development and sustainable development. Uh, I would think that uh, what we need to do is uh, um, get approval for broadband uh, in order to improve economic development. I'm Jim Lawrence, and I'm running for Congress in the second congressional district in the great state of New Hampshire. I'm running for Congress because Washington is broken. The people of the great state of New Hampshire in the second congressional district sent Representative Ann Custer to Washington to do one thing, to provide solutions and to fulfill her campaign promises. And instead, Representative Custer has gone down to Washington and done something completely different. She's supported the Washington party bosses instead of voting for the voters of the great state of New Hampshire. I am a, a three-term state rep, um, also an Air Force veteran, proud graduate of the United States Air Force Academy, small businessman, but more importantly, I'm a proud family man and parent of eight wonderful children. I could not look my children in the eye knowing that I stood by and did nothing while Washington spent their future prosperity away. The current national debt sits at $19.2 trillion. 
That's $60,000 for each and every American. And unfortunately, our federal government doesn't just stop there. It's continuing to overtax and overregulate our small businesses, which we know are the economic engine of our great nation. We are no safer than we were eight years ago. As a veteran, I'm appalled at all of the threats that are going unanswered around the world right now. We have the worst foreign policy in decades, and our allies don't feel like they can depend on us, and our enemies do not fear us. And unfortunately, our representative Ann Custer in Washington has done nothing to help solve these issues. As a matter of fact, this very week, when she was asked about whether ISIS was an important issue for her to address, she sat down on the job once again and said that that's not an important issue facing the voters of the great state of New Hampshire. I disagree. We are at a critical juncture right now. We have threats emerging around the world, threatening our national security at home and abroad. We have terrorist attacks attacking our allies and terrorist attacks right here on our homeland. Our economy is not thriving and our future prosperity, the legacy that we'll leave to our children and our grandchildren, are in grave jeopardy. I ask today for your support. I ask today for your vote. I ask you to support me so that I can return leadership to Washington, leadership that will be effective, and leadership that will return our strength to our economy, our strength to our nation, and will help keep us safe from terrorist attacks like ISIS. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm Chris Roberts. I'm running for Senate District 10. One of the big reasons that I'm running for State Senate is I feel that I'm the most qualified individual. With 21 years in the Marine Corps, 13 years on the school board, eight years on the city council, and 12 years up at Concord. I know some would think I'm stupid, but I'm publicly serious um, minded. And like I says, I think I'm the most experienced um, individual and can be the most effective up in Concord. <coughs> Excuse me. Two of the things I'm really worried about is people are talking about how we can um, handle the drug problem. Well, you shouldn't be trying to solve the problem, you should be trying to prevent the problem. So that's health and human services. We have to improve the quality of um, life of our citizens in the District 10. If you have a quality of life and you're enjoying what you do and you have hope for a better future, you don't take drugs or even the vast majority don't take drugs. So my thing is I'm going to look for things like mental health, regular type treatment, quality of life, homes, safe homes, things like that that make the individuals feel safe and feel like they have a future. The second thing that I'm going to do which might be cause a little um, disconcerned among a number of people Keene has a bad reputation. This part of New Hampshire has a bad reputation that it's not welcomed to educated women and people of color. It was like the mayor said, <clears throat> you know what, every place you go, all the leadership is made up of middle class white men who are um, financially well off. Well, there's a lot of women <clears throat> and there's a lot of people of color in New Hampshire middle class, well educated, that can come into our area, start small businesses, 15, 20 um, individuals, well paying, buy the houses we have on the market. There's almost 500 houses on the market just in the Keene area. And when you go look at Senate 10, there's about seven to 800 on the market and a significant number are in foreclosure. Concord, New Hampshire, I mean Concord, Manchester, Nashua, and Portsmouth have understood the importance of having a fertile ground for, um, for women and um, people of color. And so they are growing. 
and we need to take some of those resources. We need to take those human resources and bring them here. Overall, this area is well welcoming to people of all nationalities, religions, and colors, but we need people in, in leadership. The majority of people in Keene are female, well-educated female. We have Hannah Grimes that's helping them stop businesses. We need something bigger than Hammer Grimes or even a bigger Hammer Grimes so we can create more small businesses in Keene. Keene is never going to have a big, biz big business come in because of its tax structure. But we have Winchester and we have Hinsdale and we have Swansea. There are places that we can do. People love our area. Our area has so much to offer, but we have to change the, con <clears throat> change the fact that people think we're not welcome. If I'm elected to the Senate, I am personally going to go out and say and try to sell our, our area. I would go to business and say, come to District 10. You're more than welcome here. And I think that's the critical part. We have to go out and welcome individuals. King Cheshire County is a very progressive um, area, and people just don't seem to understand. I went to St. A's. They don't understand how our area got this misconception that we are not welcome to f f educated females and people of color. They all would add to the robust of our area. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm there to show this is the place to come, this is the place to work, and this is the place to live. I hope you would vote for me. Thank you. My name is Conan Soliday, and I'm running for New Hampshire State Representative, Cheshire, District 7, Keene, Ward 4. The main reason for my running is to represent the voters in New Hampshire who truly appreciate the benefits of living free, and for those who have lost faith in an expanding government that increasingly benefits itself rather than the people. My whole life I've watched every level of government increase in size and scope, taking on more and more responsibilities, writing new laws, adding new entitlements, and of course, demanding more tax funding to support that bureaucracy. All the while, the rights of the people have been slowly eroded away in the name of added security. In essence, our once great country made up of free individuals has slowly transformed into an overreaching, overprotective nanny state. The proper role of government is to protect the individual rights of its citizens. That is the only type of government that I can support. Any legislation I sponsor or support will fall in line with this philosophy. Any programs that do not specifically protect the rights of the individual should be handled by the free market. As it currently stands, typical representation from Keene is made up, the, made up of the we need more laws, nanny state type politicians. We don't need more laws. We need to weed through the existing ones and repeal and or reform any that unnecessarily complicate our lives. For example, there are two hot issues affecting New Hampshire residents that could stand a bit of reform. The first is the fail war, failed war on drugs. Like alcohol prohibition, which was also enacted by well-intentioned do-gooders, the war on drugs has caused serious generational harm and has done nothing to curb drug use in this state. Currently we face an opioid epidemic that many lawmakers falsely believe can be solved by spending more on SWAT teams and forced treatment facilities. Both of these solutions will only drive the problem further underground and cost taxpayers dearly. It's time to follow Portugal's lead and decriminalize all drugs. Fifteen years ago, they made the bold decision to divert resources spent on prosecuting, prosecuting and imprisoning addicts and instead made those funds available to treatment programs. The move has been extremely successful in lowering overall drug use, overdoses, and drug-related crime, all the while freeing up its police force to focus their energy on real crimes with real victims. It's apt time that New Hampshire follow suit. The second is the ever-expanding property tax rate that hurts all residents and businesses of New Hampshire, but most especially those of lower income. I've heard plenty of politicians on both sides of the aisle predicting a grim future for a graying New Hampshire and its outdated tax system that is chasing away businesses and the next generation of workers that would man those facilities. This is a real problem that will have dire consequences for the future economy of New Hampshire if it is not tackled soon. 
but it seems none are capable or willing to embrace the correct solution, and that is to cut back on spending and shrink the size of government. And no, the answer is not to switch to an income tax or create some additional sales tax. Compulsory taxation is theft and it's immoral. It's outdated, it's barbaric, and it only leads to an unfree society. It is for this reason that I gladly take the pledge that I will never support any income or sales tax and will make every effort to reducing the property tax rate in this state. Believe it or not, there are other alternatives to funding a government that doesn't require force. These include privatizing services, selling off unused public assets, and most especially, eliminating government programs that don't specifically protect the rights of the individual. And it can be done, it must be done, but change is hard for so many. If you truly care about the future of this country and of this state, and are ready to make the common sense changes necessary to supporting a healthy and truly free society, then you should vote for me. My name is Conan Soliday, and I hope to see you at the polling station Tuesday, September 13th. And if you're a registered Republican, as there is no Ward 4 candidate, please consider writing me in. I can also be reached at conansoliday at gmail.com. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jack Flanagan. I'm running for Congress in Congressional District 2 for New Hampshire. I'd like to thank Chester TV for having me. Uh, a little background, I've served locally, that is as a selectman, school board chairman, uh, vice chairman of a cooperative school district. I served on finance committee. I'm now in my third term and been conquered as a state representative. I am currently the vice chairman of the labor committee in the house, but prior to that, I was the majority leader. The reason I'm running is that we, our current congresswoman, Annie Custer, has been ineffective on a number of issues in Washington, D.C. A couple I'd like to talk about today is, one is terrorism, both foreign and domestic. For me, uh, it went from shock to anger. Uh, recently, we had a priest who was killed. We've had police officers shot and killed. The Orlando, Paris, uh, Brussels situation. Uh, things are falling apart, and we need a change of direction. And uh, unfortunately, it, what it will mean is that we will have to form, uh, excuse me, uh, make our borders more secure and also look at our H-1B visas. Uh, they are much too lax, and I think what we're getting are people in our country that shouldn't be here. The economy. In New Hampshire, I am very proud of the success that I helped achieve as majority leader. Uh, we have a balanced budget. We have less regulations. We have increased surpluses. We went from $8 million to $100 million in surplus. And we basically made government smaller. D.C. needs to do the same. Uh, I would save Social Security and Medicare uh, by balancing the budget. Uh, in 10 years, the second largest expense in the federal budget will be interest on that debt. We could, if we had balanced our budget, we could take those monies and use it to prop up Social Security and uh, Medicare uh, without making any changes. Now, if we want to make any changes, that would certainly be in the, the possibility. Um, the, uh, there are many other improvements that can be done to the economy. Um, uh, block granting to reduce the size of, of government, uh, but those are some of the things that I, I wanted to talk about. Uh, veterans. Um, currently, um, we need to provide better care for the people who have given the most to our country. Um, that includes expanding the choice card. Uh, currently, the veterans can use a choice card if they're a certain number of miles away from a VA hospital to create more uh, competition with the VA, which I think will improve the VA, we should be allowing veterans to, to go any place they want based on the best uh, uh, treatment that they can get. Another area is the mental health portion of the VA. Um, I just sadly heard a, another a vet that had committed suicide. We're seeing one vet every hour committing suicide, and that's unacceptable. Uh, one thing that I want to talk about, too, is opioids. I'm pleased that the state legislature established our heroin task force. Uh, that task force came up with legislation that not only changed um, the education for our kids and the people in the state, but also treatment for people that are already addicted. But finally, the, um, the uh, arrest of drug dealers. People may have heard of the Granite Hammer, and that was basically to fund police departments over time to do more investigations to find these dealers and basically put them out of business. Um, I'm glad to see Congresswoman uh, Custer is also following our lead uh, in Washington. She's also heading a task force similar to the one we established in Concord, on the same note, I'm glad to see she's uh, now uh, not supporting the Kinder Morgan pipeline. I was the, uh, the first person, first elected official, I believe, that came out publicly against the pipeline. 
And the reason for that was that it was the wrong project for the state of New Hampshire, and it wasn't going to lower costs uh, to, uh, to our electric uh, producers. In conclusion, uh, there's no problem in Washington, D.C. that we can't solve by sending the right person there. And I'm that person. Um, I did it in Concord, and I, I can do it in Washington, D.C. I asked for your vote in the primary on September 13th, and certainly hope for it in the general election on November 8th. Thank you very much. If you'd like to learn more about me, you can go to www.flanagan, the number four, nh.com. I'm Max Abramson, and I'm the Libertarian candidate for governor. I'm a state representative, Libertarian state representative, and I'm also the Libertarian candidate for governor. Uh, I believe that we need to get money, power, and decision making out of Concord and get it back down to the local level and back to the people. In fact, until roughly the 1990s, that's the way things worked in this state. And as a country, we had always stuck with a very small, constitutionally limited government at least until the 1950s and 60s. And we took care of problems at the local level because it was more practical to do things that way. Uh, I believe that people have the right to live their life as they see fit as long as they're not harming anyone else. I believe that as 60% of New Hampshire voters have said time and again that we need to legalize marijuana. In fact, 72% of New Hampshireites have said that we need to decriminalize marijuana, uh, cannabis. and Every other New England state has already decriminalized at least half an ounce of cannabis. There's absolutely no reason why we should be wasting state resources on these nanny state policies where the state puts people in prison to try to protect you from hurting yourself. In fact, I believe that state government should be as small as possible, it should be as decentralized as possible, and that it should do its job at the lowest possible cost to the taxpayer uh, and get out of our bedroom, get out of our lives, and get out of schools, health care, our own business, our own retirement, and not try to spend its time protecting us from hurting ourselves or telling us how to live our lives. In the legislature over the last two years, we've done a number of things. We uh, put through several uh, energy bills that were intended to save you money on electricity rates. Uh, we did increase the net metering rates from 50 megawatt hours per day to 100 megawatt hours per day. And we did that in order to improve self-reliance and help people who are trying to do things off the grid. Um, but we also made changes to the renewable portfolio standard and to REGI and uh, made other changes with Senate Bill 170 and Senate Bill 1, uh, 221 that were intended to uh, reduce electricity rates a little bit. Um, it, it, it's not a large reduction, but a few dollars here, a few dollars there. Remember all those overhead expenses for electricity, fuel, uh, maintenance costs, contracting costs. Those things also drive up costs for towns. They drive up costs for uh, schools. They drive up costs for the county and even for the jails and other public institutions. And those things get passed on in the form of higher property taxes. So we've tried to go through and look and do what thousands of elected and appointed libertarians have done all over the country. Uh, working in budget committees, state legislatures, school boards, and whatnot. Try to find ways that we can do things more efficiently. Not push some great big left wing or right wing uh, ideological agenda. We just go through budgets and try and figure out how we can save money on fuel, on fuel idling, on health care costs, and dealing with the pension crisis, the four billion dollar unfunded pension liability. We did a number of things uh, like strengthening requirements for parents to be notified if there's sexually explicit material that's going to be in the sex ed courses so that parents have two weeks notice. Unfortunately, that bill was vetoed by the governor and uh, was killed in the House. Um, uh, we were not able to sustain enough votes to, uh, to, to override the governor's veto. Um, we did increase funding for both our community college system and the university system in order to maintain steady tuition rates and try to keep college affordable. Uh, we phased out a cap on adequate education grants and adjusted the, uh, the education stabilization fund. We did that and it, it, it only, again, it only saves you about nine or ten dollars a month on your property taxes on average throughout the state. But a little bit here, a little bit there, eventually you're talking real money. 
we did a lot of other things allowing towns to provide property tax exemptions from charter schools and we increased state funding for charter schools to about sixty four hundred dollars a year that sounds like a big increase of almost a thousand dollars a year per student but actually it was meant not just to save taxpayers money that also saves taxpayers money because about forty percent of the charter schools um, deal with disadvantaged kids and some of those kids would end up in thirty to sixty thousand dollar a year uh, special ed programs that don't suit those kids very well so charter schools are usually a better deal I believe you have the right to send your child to any public private or charter school you want to and as governor I'll work with the legislature to make that happen I'm Gilletta Jarvis independent candidate for governor as a middle-class citizen of New Hampshire I'm aware of what most of New Hampshire is going through every day the need for more livable wage paying jobs, access to good health care for everyone, including those who need addiction services and mental health care, choice in education for their children, a government that doesn't bend to the will of popular special interest groups, but will instead stand up for New Hampshire's constitutional rights. I may not have grown up in a political family, but I grew up with hardworking parents who taught me that together we are stronger. So I am here as an independent candidate to work with the people of New Hampshire to show that together we can be strong and we can be prosperous. New Hampshire is a state filled with independent and intelligent people who are tired, as I am, of party politics and feeling like we are being taken advantage of. As governor, I would listen to the will of all of the people, not just a third of it. I would stand up for the rights that you should be able to demand to work with the legislature on both sides of the line, regardless of what their party is, because we need a governor who's willing to listen to everyone. I have been asked many times why I'm running and why I'm running as an independent instead of being a member of a party. Well, I'm not a member of a party because well, the parties are based mostly on what is needed in Washington. And what is needed in Washington is not necessarily what's good for New Hampshire. I would rather listen to the people here and work with you and have an open government and put more of the laws back to the people of New Hampshire to make decisions on than go towards what the parties have said that I'm supposed to vote for. So I would appreciate your taking the time to watch this and to listen and to come and visit my site and find out more about my specific ec economic plan and my uh, opinions and voice because my voice is your voice. Thank you. Hello, my name is Miguel Picanso and I'm running for New Hampshire state representative in District 12. A lot of people ask me where I'm from, so I'll begin there. I like to say I'm from Massachusetts by the way of Arkansas and Nebraska. I was born in Maine, but most of my family is here in New England and Massachusetts and New Hampshire, so even though I grew up in Arkansas, I've spent most of my life feeling like this is my home and coming here regularly sometimes twice a year, three times a year to see family. So this feels like my home, even though I just moved here uh, more permanently in 2013 in Winchester and then in Swansea 2014. I was in Nebraska with the 43rd Army Band. So I have some military background, but um, didn't earn anything like a Purple Heart or see any military service, but I do understand the ranks and the respect and the chain of commands and whatnot. And I've seen a little piece of uh, how regulations can get interfere with our lives in a way that the people at the bottom don't necessarily have their say with the people at the top. And that is why I'm running, because I feel like that the true role of the state representative is to bridge 
the frustration and that gap between everybody's common day lives and what goes on at the governmental levels at every level of government. And so our first reach towards solutions should be towards your state representatives. Also in New Hampshire, uh, with the state of affairs that it is, uh, being the most represented state in probably the world, state representatives don't get the resources by which if you call in you're going to see uh, a, a secretary or make comments to somebody that gets passed along. Uh, when I give you my number, it's my number, my cell phone. My contact information is to my email and I encourage everyone whether you want to vote for me or not, no matter if you did for, vote for me or you didn't, if I'm your state representative, I want to hear from you. A lot of people say, well, uh, you don't want to hear from me. But yes, then I definitely need to hear from you. And that's where I am uh, in terms of policies are concerned. Um, all I have right now are the few stories that have been passed on to me and my principles. That's all I have to go on. And I'm go, I'll go over some of those briefly, but if my principles aren't where they should be because they're too ideal, they don't fit in with how government is currently run, either the system needs to change and I'll be a part of that, or I need to change my principles so that things can still get done in the way that uh, is effective and efficient. But I will not be able to make any changes if I don't hear from people. And that's the toughest part because, again, people are so frustrated with their politicians, the political systems, the parties, the gridlock, and it's my job to overcome those obstacles even amongst the, the, the conversations that I have door to door. Uh, I, I want to hear about how regulations are getting in, in the way of your everyday life. I want to hear about the waste and the spending that, that is just part of how things are done now and um, how it just it's a waste of time. So in resources, I want to help and I'm listening and I'd like to change anything that I can even in, even my own views to make New Hampshire the best place it can possibly be. Hi, I'm John Jay and I'm running for executive council at district number two. The job of executive councilor is basically unknown throughout the state of New Hampshire. I have visited towns where they'd never even heard of the executive councilor. What do we do? We approve contracts, we approve judicial appointments, uh, justice of the peace, notary publics. Our day starts on a Friday evening when the state police arrive at your home with the agenda and all the paperwork to back it up on a Friday night. You have Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to review the contents of the agenda, which could be uh, 600 items, and see what we, any accounts interest us the most. We can interview uh, all appointments. We uh, go to a meeting on breakfast on Wednesday morning and discuss the agenda. Sometimes the governor may pull certain items on the agenda, but the governor has the sole authority uh, to make the agenda, uh, the council cannot interject with uh, their own programs. We start off with the notaries and the JPs uh, and approve them or disapprove them. We get into the ag agenda with uh, appointments and judgeship nominations. And then we go to the general agenda, which is 99.9% .9 contracts uh, the state is issuing uh, in excess of 25,000 throughout the state of New Hampshire. During my prior term, I brought the council to 24 towns in this district. Most of those towns had never even had a government body come into the district. 
we go from Walpole, New Hampshire, all the way across to Roxbury, uh, Rochester, and Summersworth on the other side of the state. It's one fifth of the population, and we can uh, be called at any time. I'm a 24-7 uh, candidate, uh, available 24-7, and I can travel anywhere within this district on the, on the day's call. I look forward to having the opportunity to serve again, and will be available at any time for questions. Thank you. My name is William Pearson. I'm running for at-large state rep Cheshire 16. First, I'd like to thank Cheshire TV for allowing us to use their facilities and their commitment to, uh, to democracy by inviting myself and the other candidates here. It's always encouraging to see democracy working so well at these levels. Um, that being said, my name is William Pearson. I'm running to be one of Keene's at-large state representatives. The city of Keene consists of five voting wards, each with their own state representative and two at-large seats, which represent the entire city. Residents from Ward 1 have gotten to know me these past two years because I was fortunate enough to be their representative-elect in 2014. And during my term, I spent most of, much of my time learning the legislative process in Concord and, and listening to constituents here in Keene so that I'd be best prepared to represent them uh, at-large for these next two years. Indeed, one of the reasons that I'm running at large right now is because I feel that I now have the experience required to do the job. The other reason is, of course, because I love this city and, and I think I can make it even better. Here's how, in a word, infrastructure. New Hampshire consistently ranks near last out of the 50 states uh, concerning infrastructure funding, and it certainly shows. The unusually harsh winter of 2014 illustrates the state's inability to grasp this problem. I witnessed the debates at the State House about funding for the Department of Transportation, and it was like pulling teeth just to get support, uh, just to support the department enough to fund their snow plowing efforts. Uh, herein lies the problem. Funding infrastructure should not take political dentistry. While it may seem frugal uh, to put bridge and road maintenance off until the next budget cycle, the damage and wear compounds, and so, so too do, do, do the repair costs in the interim. This still ignores the necessary infrastructure the state is going to need to undertake to attract new business, an issue that has proved vexing for, for, for New Hampshire counties, uh, I guess that really the, the only exceptions being Hillsborough and Rockingham. I, I know about the progress of these counties well because I was raised in Hillsborough County uh, in, the, in the town of Bedford. I've seen how Manchester and Portsmouth have benefited from modern rights of way and broadband access. I want to see the same here in Keene. It is true that Cheshire County is not far behind our neighbors to the east, but that figurative last mile may indeed be the toughest. Hillsborough and Rockingham County uh, both have broadband coverage reaching upwards of 95%. Uh, Hillsborough, I actually think, has 98%. Uh, Cheshire County, just slightly above 75%. From my parents' house in Bedford, it is easier and, and more practical for me to work out of Boston than it is for me to work here in state in Keene. And that really needs to change if we want to see business growth. If these solutions are available, why then haven't they been done? It's, it's really a question I still ask myself, and, and not just about infrastructure. The answer, at least in part, is revealed in my recollection of the 2014 New Hampshire winter. The state's reluctance to fully fund the Department of Transportation so that they could simply plow the roads shows how much is done in New Hampshire through the lens of frugality. Uh, as a benefit to these purse-pinching measures, New Hampshire is a donor state to the federal government, I think we receive around 60-something cents back for every dollar we spend to the federal government. And, and, and we consistently have some of the best public educators for a fraction of what it would cost us to get that education elsewhere. Uh, as a side note, imagine what, what we would gain if we funded our public education at the levels they requested. Um, so, so the drawbacks, however, are just as numerous and perhaps more onerous than ever. Uh, our, our quest to cut spending results in deliberately low budget estimates which hamstrings the budget drafting process and results in general fund surplus, uh, surpluses every biennium. It's actually something Governor Maggie Hassan's campaigning on in her, in her race against uh, Kelly Ayotte. Um, but it's unfortunate, and, and it results in politicians pledging to never compromise on tax issues, and, and it results in a stagnant economy where our unemployment is more a measure of people who have left the state 
uh, in, in search of work elsewhere than it is a measure of jobs left open. As a representative from Keene, I will help mitigate or eliminate the state's deficiencies in these areas of infrastructure and, and many more which, which time doesn't allow me to illuminate. I will continue to cultivate uh, and maximize the potential within Keene, Cheshire County, and, and indeed New Hampshire through dogged work, smart compromise, and honest discourse. I'd like to thank Cheshire TV again, and I'd like to thank you all for listening. I look forward to your support, support in November. I'm Frank Edelblue, and I'm running for governor. The first thing that you need to know about me is that I am not a career politician. I have not spent my career wandering the halls of government, trying to figure out how to spend other people's money, or climbing the political ladder trying to figure out how I could become governor. No, I've spent my life creating and building jobs. I started as an accountant with a company called PricewaterhouseCoopers, which many of you probably know. I've audited companies around the world, helping them you know, with their finances, helping them streamline, the, streamline their operations, helping them root out waste, fraud, and abuse. After eight years there, I took a job as the chief financial officer for a small public company. After about three months in that job, I discovered that there were problems, and I had to make the hard decision. It was hard not because I didn't know what to do, but because I was married, I had two kids and one on the way, and I knew that if I took the right action that I would end up losing my job. But I did that, I went to the board of directors and I reported my found findings and I moved on. I then had the opportunity to live the American dream. And my wife and I, my wife of 30 years by the way, are very excited to have been able to do that. We started a company at our kitchen table. That business grew from that humble beginning at our kitchen table to over 800 employees operating in over 20 countries with tens of millions of dollars in revenue. I sold that business in 2009 and to this day I continue to create jobs and create opportunity for people as an investor in startup companies and other small businesses. But I realized after I left that, my company that you know, the environment was not as good as when I started out and that I needed to do something. So I ran for the legislature where I have served for the last year and a half long enough to know what the problems are, but not so long as to become one of them. And if we are going to move this state forward, we need a different governor. We need a governor who knows how to create jobs. We need a governor who knows how to grow wages. Do you know that New Hampshire ranks 49th in terms of productivity growth? Productivity growth is what drives wage growth and salary increases, which is what people of New Hampshire are, are aching for right now. So I know how to do that, and I hope that you will support my run for governor. And you can check out the information at frankadelblue.com on the internet, and I appreciate this opportunity to get to know you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jay Kahn. I'm running for State Senate in District 10. I'm running for State Senate to represent you, the citizens of District 10, in the State Senate to advocate on your behalf and to help improve the lives of the citizens in Cheshire County. My passion for helping others has come from my 43 years of leadership and transforming lives through education. I possess the skills, the expertise, and the executive leadership, leadership experience to make it that kind of positive change. People who've worked with me know that I listen, I define problems well, I engage people in the solutions, and I get things done. And for that reason, I am supported by over 30 elected officials who represent you, the citizens of Cheshire County. This includes Senator Molly Kelly, who I hope to succeed as the state senator, Congressman Annie Custer, 12 Democratic state representatives, 11 of my fellow city councilors, the current mayor, and the past mayor of Keene. What they know is that I possess the skills, experience, and leadership. And I've demonstrated that at a national, regional, and local level. Over my 28 years at Keene State College as Vice President for Finance and Planning, I helped lead over $400 million of improvements at the campus. My engagement with the community has come through my efforts 
uh, with the Chamber of Commerce, where I was the chairman of the board and helped implement a workforce coordinator program. Through the creation of Manadnet, the first internet service uh, supporting the Manadnock region. As the leader of the Manadnock Economic Development Corporation, leveraging incentives to help businesses grow and start up in Cheshire County. I've chaired the Cheshire Medical Center Board of Directors, and I was asked to support to, to create and establish the first guardian ad litem child advocacy service for abused and neglected kids, CASA in this portion of the state to represent those kids uh, from those households uh, in Cheshire and Sullivan counties. My desire is to expand the economic opportunities for people in this region and to do that we've got to retain and attract a workforce that's going to help businesses who are here and that are growing have the workforce that they need for the 21st century. This includes the manufacturing, information, technologies, and health professionals needed to support this region. My, develop, my, my priorities are as follows. Economic development through retaining and attracting and training a better workforce. Through educational opportunities that start at zero to five expand the early childhood opportunities both through assessment and through education and by articulating the curriculum uh, from daycare centers into kindergarten to help those developmental opportunities grow in, in, in those nurturing years, to improve our elementary and secondary schools, to improve the access to higher education, and to improve the uh, the workforce training and retraining needed uh, to continue to grow and innovate in this region. I want to help expand access to health care. I will support the expanded Medicaid and Planned Parenthood and we need to expand the mental health services available in this region. We want to have more secure communities and uh, we need to address issues of income, housing and food insecurity and largely those things come from uh, the misuse and abuse of uh, drugs and we need to have a strong enforcement education and most particularly treatment programs that are effective and last through people's recovery. We need to expand broadband in this region so that people have the technology for their businesses at home and in the workplace to grow. We need safe highways and bridges like that in Hinsdale on Route 119. And we need to expand alternative energies. I want to represent you to make this region grow and be more effective. And in order to do that, I'll need your vote on September 13th in the primary. Over 30 public officials serving you endorse my candidacy. And I hope that if you need more information on my candidacy, you'll go to conforsenate.com. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Ed Bryans. I'm running for state representative for District 10, which is the towns of Troy and Marlboro. The reason I'm running is for a lot of reasons. I have been actively attending school board meetings. I go to Concord and provide public input in an area that I'm especially concerned of, which is the Child and Family Law Committee. In my opinion, a lot of the problems in society start at the home and at the family. I'm tired of the government intruding in areas that it should not be in. There was a recent bill stated Parents have the right to control the health, education, and welfare of their children. Had I voted on that bill, I would have voted yes, in favor of that. I do believe parents have that right. There are a lot of other concerns that are happening in our community. There is a current opioid concern. I've sat down with both police chiefs of Troy and Marlboro and asked for their input. I'm happy to say that we tend to agree on a lot of the concerns. and. If elected representative, I will continue to sit down with these people with their boots on the ground and learn from them and support the bills that will put an end to this crisis once and for all. I won't go into a long detail of my other concerns, 
But I would like you to know, you, you can feel free to reach out to me. I have a Facebook page, Ed Bryans NH, and also I have a email address, xx Ed Bryans, xx at gmail.com. Please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to get back to you and go into more detail. Thank you. I'm Howie Bagley, running for New Hampshire House, District 16. I'm running because I believe, as Thoreau said, that government is best that governs least. Less is more when it comes to busybodies, aka lawmakers, telling you what you can put in your body, how you should run your business, and deciding how much money they can take from you in property and restaurant taxes so that they can fund their pet projects du jour. At the national level, increasingly, the hand of government is pressing on the scales. In 2008, some too-big-to-fail companies received handouts while you and I were left holding the bill. We're now at $19 trillion in debt, at a near zero savings rate, and the economy is stalled and the central bankers have run out of ammunition. When the next recession comes, the federal government won't be able to prop up all the malinvestment. We've also seen our privacy eroded because they felt it was necessary to sacrifice our liberty for a little security. The Fourth Amendment, the right to be secure in our persons and property, is in complete tatters. The war on drugs is a resounding failure. All we have to show for it is that we have the dubious distinction of having the highest incarceration rates per capita than any other nation. And many of our inmates are jailed for victimless crimes. We're also at war in so many countries that we've lost count. Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, Libya, plus our warmongering elites are flirting with engaging Russia in the Baltics and China in the South China Sea. When will it end? The small race I'm in to be a legislator for New Hampshire might not seem to have much to do with these national and international issues that I just mentioned, but I think it does. For example, New Hampshire should join the ranks of the other states like Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, and D.C. in the outright legalization of marijuana for recreational use. Not only does that strike out an existing foolish law, but it's a demonstration of New Hampshire exercising the language in the Tenth Amendment of rights being reserved to the states for issues that don't fall under the purview of the federal government. And New Hampshire shouldn't stop there. We should continue to strike down any and all federal laws that are unconstitutional. My mantra as a legislator is to always uphold the Bill of Rights, your right to free speech, your right to defend yourself, your right to privacy. The choice is pretty clear in the race for District 16. One of my opponents wants to limit your right to defend yourself, and he'd like to lock up everyone in town who smokes a joint, and he believes that we should rat each other out to crack down on all this harmless wrongdoing. Is this the kind of message that we want to send one another? That we don't trust each other? That if one of us ingests or is in the possession of a harmless plant, that they should be locked up in a cage? That government can take away our rights because some lawmaker thinks they know what's best for us? Liberty, that ideal that our forefathers fought for, is a two-way street. We, the citizens, gave some power to government in order to have it accomplish some things, like provide defense. But government has to trust us as well. If government doesn't trust us, then it becomes easily tyrannical. And we're seeing the signs of this increase with each passing day. What message does it send when we have tanks roll down our quaint city streets? It says, we don't trust you. We know better, and you're under our thumb. It's the same message that the Redcoats sent to the citizens of Boston, Lexington, and Concord, that they were no longer free citizens, but they were under the control of an occupying army. The images of Ferguson, Missouri are still fresh in our minds. Tanks and sniper rifles pointed at us, the citizens. I shuddered when I saw this, did you? I moved here three years ago from San Francisco, a very tolerant city socially, but a city and state that has more and more eroded personal liberty and increased taxes to an intolerable degree. I had enough of that, and I moved here to be built closer to family and enjoy what I thought would be increased liberty. In truth, New Hampshire does enjoy many freedoms that Californians don't have, but I see the signs of limited liberty here too. Encroachments on free speech, onerous regulations on small business, limits on the right to self-defense, draconian and punitive drug laws, which only serve to support black markets, which endangers purity and permits fentanyl-related deaths. We need to start treating each other as human beings and stop treating drug addiction as a crime, but rather as a health issue. Now that you understand my politics, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm employed at a Silicon Valley software company, and I've been working in that industry for the past 20 years. I understand technology and the business of technology, and I feel that we can replicate by degree the Silicon Valley business model here in Keene and revolutionize our industries. I also love legislature, legislatures, not because of the damage that they can potentially do, but because they are meeting places for spirited debate. 
I've worked as an intern in the Utah legislature for a campaign finance organization called Common Cause and as a five-year employee of the United States Senate where I served in the Republican leadership. It's been a dream of mine to one day be a legislator. I think Keene and New Hampshire's best days are ahead, lowering taxes, incentivizing technology, and promoting liberty will all help greatly to create jobs here and jumpstart our state and local economy back to life. This choice could not be clearer in District 16. If you want to say enough to high taxes, enough to inmates for victimless crimes, enough regulation that is strangling small business, and if you want to send a message to the rest of this country that this is the place to be for liberty, technology startups, and a healthier human-centric approach to our nation's drug problems, then vote for me. Thank you for your consideration.